Good morning class and welcome to our continuing discussions of hydropower. In the previous class, we started our discussion on how hydropower can also be used as a way of storing energy rather than generating energy. This method is called pumped hydro storage. And the uh, method only works for reaction turbines, which can be run in reverse as a to pump water up an incline using electrical power. So a reaction turbine is a system which can be run as a turbine to generate electricity from a flowing water and can be run in reverse as a pump to flow water uphill by expending electricity. Okay. So in pumped storage, excess electrical power is converted to potential energy of water stored at high heads. So you are doing the reverse. You are uh, pumping water from a downstream side up a reservoir expending electricity and converting the electricity into the potential energy of the reservoir water. This is done in times of low demand when there is low electricity consumption. So you are uh, using uh, extracting some energy from the grid and running the turbine as a pump and moving water uphill. Then in periods of high demand when there is a lot of energy demand in the grid, what you are doing is you are moving that water down the incline and running the uh, system as a turbine and generating uh, like uh, recovering that energy as electricity. And this type of storage technology is basically a way of storing energy and uh, uh, it's kind of what is called a demand shifting mode. So you are uh, extracting energy when there is an excess energy in the grid, you are extracting that energy and storing it and then where there is a lot of demand and low energy supply, you are pushing that energy back during periods of high demand. So it helps mitigate supply demand imbalances that may lead to high prices, electricity fluctuations, power outage or even grid failures at times of high demand and idling losses in terms of low demand. Okay. So in low demand, the energy is lost. So it's called an idling loss. In high demand, if there is less energy, there may be voltage fluctuations, the AC frequency may drop there may be uh, uh, the energy prices may soar, you can have power outages, etc. Okay. So to avoid those, you are pushing that energy back uh, during the periods of high demand using the pumped hydro storage. It's a long term energy storage option can, because water in the reservoir can be stored indefinitely. You can store the water for a very long time in the reservoir uh, for several months. So you can store the water for a long time. So it's a long term energy storage option. Very useful when used in conjunction with renewable energy that are intermittent in nature. So what we mean by this is consider a solar farm. We will discuss solar farms in detail later. Clearly a solar uh, farm cannot generate electricity at night when the sun is not shining. Right. But it will generate a lot of electricity during the daytime when there is a lot of solar insulation. Okay there may not be as much demand from the grid of that electricity. So you are storing part of that electricity in terms of pumped water up a reservoir. So a pumped hydro storage installation has been built along with the solar pump so that during daytime a part of the electricity generated is used to pump water uphill and then during night when the solar farm is no longer generating electricity that water is coming downhill and you are running your Francis turbine, you are getting back the electricity that way. And in that way, that solar power plant plus pumped hydro storage installation can together generate electricity and push it to the grid 24 by 7 at a certain constant rate. Okay, so that's the idea that you can mitigate the intermittency problem of many of these renewable energy sources using this kind of a system. And there is a large install capacity of around 158 gigawatts of pumped hydro storage in 2019. So it's one of the largest uh, methods of storing energy currently available in the world. Okay. So this is the idea of the pumped hydro storage as we are saying. You have the generator slash pump system. Uh, it is associated with some type of renewable energy generation like a wind turbine or a solar farm. When there is excess electricity, you are drawing that electricity and running this as a pump, uh, extracting water from the bottom reservoir and pushing it to the top reservoir. Then during night time or periods of uh, high demand, 
you are moving that uh, water back down running this as a turbine generating electricity and moving it to the grid and again filling the bottom reservoir now let's finally come to the sustainability issues with hydro turbine so hydro turbine is renewable the next question is is it sustainable and the answer is it depends for example large hydropower dams block the flow of the river creating large reservoirs that inundate upstream land this may cause drowning of arable lands displacement of people from villages and destruction of natural habitats you are creating a large artificial reservoir and you are artificially blocking a flow of a natural river that reservoir will inundate large tracts of land area where people may have been living or where there have been natural ecosystem or wildlife so this will cause displacement of people from villages or destruction of natural habitats okay so for an estimate of 40 to 80 million people has been displaced worldwide as a result of large hydro projects so there is a significant cost of uh, uh, of this aspects so if proper facilities are not made to uh, house this displaced people due to the general uh, installation of a large hydropower they will lose out on livelihood economy etc okay another aspect is dams and reservoirs create barriers to the natural flow of rivers and damage river life this can severely affect fish species that migrate upstream like hilsa salmon etc hilsa is a popular migratory fish in eastern india and it's well established that the population of hilsa has decreased significantly after the construction of the farakka barrage in, in over the ganga rivers because the hilsa can no longer migrate beyond the marriage to the upstream of the ganga rivers where their traditional breeding grounds were so there is a significant population decline of hilsa because of that and similar situation has also happened in us for the salmon population which is a very similar type of a migratory fish that move upstream in the rivers during their breeding season another issue is barrier to the flow causes heavy silting in the reservoir and in the upstream so you have uh, in the dam the kinetic energy of the water is stopped so all the mud and the rocks that the water was carrying from the upstream gets dumped into the reservoir bed and slowly this silt builds up and builds up and starts filling up the reservoir so this increases flood risk because the reservoir becomes shallower and shallower over time and lowers reservoir capacity over time so often during times of heavy rains because the reservoirs have low capacity now you have to open the gates and a lot of water suddenly moves downstream flooding large tracts of uh, villages and causing catastrophic flooding this has happened in many rivers in india and worldwide as well another great risk is catastrophic dam collapse due to engineering stresses or earthquakes see we are damming rivers that usually are in mountains and mountains are earthquake prone regions so suppose there is a large earthquake which causes engineering stresses to build up and the dam to burst okay this can create flash floods devastating large regions and killing thousands of people so that's a another concern with this large scale dams so there is a a significant amount of research is going on throughout the world making large hydropower construction process more ecologically friendly because we need renewable energy resources so we have to manage the sustainability concerns somehow and smaller hydropower systems do not have these problems and may be more attractive for electrification of hard to access rural and indigenous communities so with that we are stopping our hydropower uh, discussion and in, from the next class onwards we will discuss wind energy which is another form of conversion of kinetic energy to electricity but instead of flowing water we are using the flow of wind okay so thank you for listening and hope uh, this hydropower section was uh, clear to you please come back with questions and uh, uh, let uh, and feedback thank you Thank you.